Hello, welcome everybody. I know you're used to me doing this big kind of bond experience opening, but this is something a little bit different. You could see by the people, my good friends that are joining me today, this is very much a three-way, wait for it, conversation. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm dubbing this group, ready for this? The Being Q the Music Experience. Yes. <laughs> It's, it's not one of the, it's the being Q, the music experience. I worked all afternoon on that and it went over like an anvil. Um, but really what we wanted to do was get the three of us on uh, a discussion because there's something coming up around the holidays. And I know you're racking your brain. What do I purchase and what do I buy? Even Joe put out a, you know, what are the 12 best bond gifts? This is something that you can join that is something for the entire family. And Joe and I felt very passionate about talking to Warren about it because he's the one hosting it. So something very special is happening on December 23rd. Warren, what's what's happening? Well, we are rerunning the 50th anniversary concert of an Onomagi Secret Service, which of course was live at Piz Gloria back in June. So it's, it's we've not put really anything from it out there at all. It's been only available exclusively to our our little fan network who subscribe every month to what we do um but we're putting it out there to is it's the last opportunity really of this year to do something to celebrate that 50th anniversary uh, and also hopefully just to spread a bit of the cue the music love around the world and and show people uh, what we do um so it's just going to be up for that that two hour period that the concert lasts and once it finishes it'll be gone uh, and the only way you'll be able to get it is to come and join our our little um, community that you guys are both part of, of course. So. Well, thank you for that. And this is this is kind of like going to be the Star Wars holiday special where it premieres for just one time and then it's gone until you find it like 25 years later on VHS. So, right. so, so let's talk about this because Joe and I, one of the reasons why we wanted to come on with Warren today is we have very unique perspectives on what you're going to see on December 23rd. First of all, Joe was there. So we want to hear about the emotion, the connection, the live aspects, how it affected him in the short term and the long term. We're going to put him on the psychiatry couch. <laughs> Me, you know, total FOMO, fear of missing out. I, I wasn't there, but Warren hooked me up and he allowed me to actually watch the entire concert on my computer. So I was able to see it. So we're going to bring very, two very different perspectives. Consider this discussion that you're hearing today a teaser, which I know you're used to, mm -hmm. a teaser of December 23rd uh, for a very family-oriented uh, thing. As I was watching it, I kept saying to myself, this isn't something just for the Bond fan, but if you have friends and family, I mean, this could be almost like the Yule log for December 23rd, where you could have it on and people, kids, adults, your Aunt Toulouse could be watching this and really enjoy it. But Joe, we're going to start with you because you were there for this concert live. And I know you've talked about this a lot, but talk <laughs> to us about the emotion behind it. Yeah, I, I have talked about it a lot. I, I don't mind talking about it again because it, it the tricky part is honestly putting it into words because this was literally on every level. Uh, layers upon layers, and I'm not being overly dramatic. I mean, I'm really serious. Uh, where just sort of the whole world just kind of merged, all points merged at this event. Um, again, it was the 50th anniversary. I'm halfway around the world tracking bond locations um, in Portugal and then in Switzerland with some of the stars of the film, culminating at his Gloria at the epicenter of this film, again, one of my, if not my favorite, all Bond film of all time. Uh, and it just peaks with this concert. And again, and I had heard, I, I have friends who've, who've told me about Cue the Music. Like, have you seen, seen these guys yet? I'm like, no, no, I never have. And they're like, oh my God, you, you're missing out. You, you really, and I'm like, oh, okay. And then I, I see it and I'm like, wow. I mean, just wow. First of all, the the I, I mean, I have to credit Warren and the group for this. First of all, this this location is like how many thousand meters above sea level? Three thousand something. Three thousand. I mean, so ever like there were people there who kind of you know you go to this place and you don't realize like this is like really high up. 
Like this is like you're t- you're tickling the stratosphere, and there were people kind of getting a little lightheaded. Your your breathing was a little different. You know what I mean? And I, I mean, there were some people who had to leave a little early. Uh, so then I'm watching the band play, and I'm like, this is like these guys are blowing trumpets, mm. singing. I mean, like they're 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 using their lungs in a way that I never could. And I mean, and they're doing it here. So already I'm kind of I'm like just sort of the um, you know the 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 tech the technique of all of this and and I tr- I'm thinking of all the logistics of getting this all the equipment there and just getting this whole thing together is 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 really nothing short of amazing. And Warren, didn't um, you have didn't you have some acclimation issues or discussions? I mean, you had to get acclimated to what Joe's talking about, right? Yeah, I mean, it really did. It had a, quite a bad effect on us actually, and and. I had heard previously um, before we went, people said to us, if you go up earlier in the day and spend the day up there, you'll get acclimatized. But then we were up there all day and started feeling worse. And then people were saying to us, oh, it's because you've been up here all day. It was like, what? No, you tell us. <laughs> so, so, yeah, um, I, at least half the band were feeling really rough. Um, both Kerry and Matt, the two singers before the show, were feeling really bad. Kerry actually... Um, she was struggling to get her words out. She was slurring her words. And of course, you know, when you're singing, you've got to get lyrics out. And she started getting really upset. I mean, about two or three hours before the show, she was, you know, getting quite teary about it. She said, I, I can't speak. Like, how am I going to sing? And it was only because I had these, um, had some herbal stuff with me. Um, do you know ginseng? I had some ginseng, which is sharpens yeah, mentally. Uh, sure. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I gave her one of those, dissolved it in water, and, and it really brought her around. Uh, my sound engineer was in floods of tears during the dinner because she was su- suffering terribly from vertigo and all the other things as well. Um, and my guitarist actually thinks he blacked out a, a part a, during part of the show. Uh, I said, well, how do, you, how do you mean? He said, well, I was stood there. He said, and I was feeling really bad, and the world was spinning. And he said, and then for... About 10 seconds, I didn't know where I was, what I was doing. And then I came around. I didn't know what song we were on or anything else. He said, and it just took me about 30 seconds to kind of come back into where we were. You know, I was I must say I was feeling quite, quite rough all day. But then I think everybody in the band felt uh, found the same thing, actually, once that show started. And there's that roar from the crowd and the, the adrenaline, adrenaline just went and you know, I, it was such an explosion of 15 years almost of frustration, uh, or not frustration, but waiting for that opportunity. You know, I said, I mean, hearing what Joe just said then, you know, I mean, it's just incredible for me. And when we do theater shows and stuff now, I mean, obviously there's lots of Bond fans in there, but I would take one Bond fan like Joe saying what he did just now. Uh, I would, I would take that and enjoy that more than a thousand people in a room politely clapping to. Um, to what we've just done because when I started it I was just like you guys you know just a bomb fan I love the films uh, I listen to the podcast and, and what have you um, and it took years and years to get the, the bomb fan and the bomb community to really appreciate what we were trying to do and understand that it was done from a absolutely from a base of love of the mm-hmm. of the series um, and when so when we finally started to get that recognition from the bomb fans it, it was just an unbelievable feeling and yeah. that's kind of taken little steps um and then got quicker and quicker and over the last sort of four or five years with with the, the events that martin has invited us to come perform at and obviously with this one the sort of year running up to that the planning for it just thinking about it for uh, yeah. every time i thought about it i was just like ready to explode with the opportunity to show the bond community how much it meant to us and what we could do and how how you know, the, the love that I wanted to, um, that there's been poured into it that was able to then sort of pour out of it. And I want to I want to point out two things that relate exactly to what both of you are saying, because as I was watching this um, hour and 50 minute concert, which people have the ability on December 23rd, link right below to see themselves. There was two things I saw. First of all, you're funny as freaking hell, Warren. What <laughs> Warren does is he speaks in between, not every song, but but a lot of the songs. He speaks to the audience. He engages. And it's not some guy who was hired to do Bond songs for the night. It is a guy who his sweat, passion, stress, and, and the love of his life is coming out in everything that he says. But he's got these really funny anecdotes. And he's speaking to the crowd, not as a faceless crowd, but as people that... 
he has known and they've known him. That's number one. And you're going to see that yourself. And it's amazing to watch. Number two, you are going to see them fighting against Mother Nature. And I'll tell mm. you why. In the encore, and I'm not going to give away what the encore is because it was my favorite part. The last nine minutes of this concert is everything. All right. And that's, I'm going to leave you with that. We're not going to give anything away with that last nine minutes. But um, uh, I'm sorry, is it Terry or Carrie? Your, main, your, your female Carrie, singer. Carrie, Carrie Schultz. Yeah. Carrie. Carrie holds this note and then literally you see her double back, grab mm. herself and then kind of start to go like this. And you could tell the mm. oxygen in the mountain was fighting her. Guess who won, yeah. folks? Mm -hmm. She won. She we won. won. It's amazing to watch. Yes, that's right. You won. You won, believe me. You won. She, exactly. She she smashed it that night, actually, didn't she? And I mean, um, I mean, she always delivers. Uh, and the, the guys in the band as well, when we go on stage, I've always said to them, look, when we go on stage, we give 100 percent all the time. I don't mind if you go for it and, and, you know, you make a little mistake, there's an error or whatever. I'll take that if you give everything that you've got all the way through. Because, you know, so much at the time when I go and see performances, it's quite safe and it's all very nice. And you know, I come away going, yeah, that was that was good. But I want I want people when they come and see Cue the Music, I want people to come away going, wow, that was such an emotional, passionate experience. And, yeah. uh, you know, most of the time we, we get away with it without having any sort of any sort of car. Well, most of the time I'm being a bit. Uh, a bit uh, kind there it, it, you know we we don't really cock it up too much but um you know what i'm saying is that i want everyone to leave everything on the stage when when they get out there and um that was a that obviously made it a bit more uh, difficult i mean we even had i'm not even kidding we had four oxygen tanks on on the stage that i took with us just in case anyone sure started to struggle the drummer had one the lead trumpet player had one and the two singers had them as well i said look if you start to feel lightheaded take a few puffs of oxygen and hopefully you'll, it'll be all right but i mean i've that's actually in the end of goldfinger it's the shortest that i've ever heard kerry hold the last note and i said to her before she went on i, I said look it's the first song you're doing kerry i said i know that you want to give it everything i know you want to give it everything you normally would i said but just for this one time just take that a little bit safe because the last thing we always do is go keeling over and smack your head on the ground and that'll be the end of the show you know yeah, yeah. it would just so be the mail, mail stuff from there on <laughs> joe, exactly, joe, yeah. what was your what was your joe what was your favorite song or part of this concert if you, if you, you can pinpoint yeah i mean honestly that is you're not kidding when you say can you pinpoint first of all you know we we're talking about carrie doing goldfinger and it's funny like she came out with that, right? That was the first, that was the opening song. And I remember thinking like, geez, that is, you know, that is a song that is notorious for being a tough song. You know, like Shirley, Shirley Bassey is like, no, you know, so well known for, you know, it, it's such an impressive song to sing. Carrie starts with that. Gold finger. opens with that and, it, and it's kind of i mean like i'm gonna dork out by referencing the the no time to die trailer already but the way the trailer comes out guns blazing like they just came out swinging that's how the show opens like she doesn't like nah, we don't we don't work up slowly boom you're getting goldfinger to start and then we get going mm -hmm. um it's favorite parts i have to tell you i mean there's and again are we going to talk about some of the things that are in the show we got am i giving away yeah, any secrets let's do it. No, let's, uh, let's talk about it and then hopefully people will watch you <laughs> oh yeah yeah i mean it's you have to see this believe me uh the the like first there was there was two things that like that really stuck out for me one was the fact that there were a couple songs that you guys did that are sort of sort of notoriously my least favorite bond songs mm. And I and I and I swear to you, I was sitting there and again. This I'm I'm the, like I I I was sort of I thought the concert was going to sort of happen and it would sort of be kind of background music for some of the things that were going on. But like once it started, you were just sort of glued and mesmerized by the show. Um, when they started doing some of the songs that I'm not keen on. And I kind of was like, well, okay, well they can't all be spectacular. There's going to be some filler stuff that I'm not going to be. They 
knocked it out of the park. Like, I mean, I was literally like, this is really good. And now suddenly, like, I again, I prefer the cue the music ver version, but I'm like, I, I'm sold on this song. And that's that is kind of bizarre to me. Like, how is that even possible? But I swear to you, I was loving these these songs. The other part that really blew my mind. And again, we're here at the On Her Majesty's Secret Service 50th anniversary party. Um, they did a suite of several of the tracks from the film. We, and, and by the way, my favorite John Barry score of all the films, yeah. they they did a suite of so many of the, of the very, very familiar tracks. And it all went together as, as like one long piece of music. And it was just phenomenal i mean again i'm and that's when you sort of it's it's kind of hitting me like this is like the mecca like like i can't imagine any fan of any movie bond or otherwise doing something that literally just felt like like the world is just again like everything just lining up perfectly and i mean like the greatest spot the greatest place this will never ever happen again and when that music was playing, I'm like, this is insane. I'm in Piz Gloria listening to this band do this music. And it's and it's spot on. And and I'll, and that'll actually I'm going to add a third if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> and this this shocked me as well, because not only did they do that, but at one point they did the propeller heads version of Honor Majesties. And I said to my, I said, this is crazy. Like this band went from and, and I'm looking at the band, too. I mean, it's a big band. I mean, there's a lot of players, a lot of instruments. I mean, they can do 13, a lot. I, 13 in the band. I mean, you know, right. So, I, I mean, so I, I'm sort of like, I get it. Yeah, I guess they can do a lot with that. But again, I, when they went from John Barry, 1969, kind of, you know, old school, brassy, you know, to do a modern techno propeller head version. And, and, and literally both of them were perfect. I'm like... How did you do that? Like how I, I literally said to myself, I like I would imagine like a whole different set of instruments. And again, I get I mean, people know music better than me, so I, I can't really but I just I was sort of dazzled and said, How is that even possible? I, I wanna, Joe, I wanna, I'm 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 still trying to work it out. <laughs> I don't know how we pulled it I don't know how we pulled it off. He he does it by happy accident. <laughs> what one of the things I'll say, I wanna I wanna actually speak to the casual fan of music that's watching this right now. So you got a lot of people, there's literary people watching this, you got clothing guys that are watching this, movie guys. Even if you're not so into the music and soundtracks, you have, you've you got to be there on December 23rd and I'll tell you why. What I found interesting watching this concert is, it's a little bit of an education. So first of all, there's a moment in there where they actually show you how a band of this size can even appear to be a bigger band. And the sound effects that you put in, like from Die Another Day and Dr. No, and all these different sound effects that can occur from one individual. But then how does that blend in seamlessly so it doesn't sound like masturbation of music? Mm -hmm. And it's, excuse that term. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, you can quote me on that. But I mean, it, it's the other thing is, and I'm gonna dare say this, there are elements of this that you will hear that actually improve on the original. And I think what you were dancing nicely around, Joe, is things like writings on the wall, which quite frankly, I think you guys blew it out of the water and it's never been that palatable for me. I'll just be totally honest. And Warren, you and I have talked about this. You made it so beautiful and so connected and so emotional that it really brought it home. And then you had other genius moments where I'm like, did this guy just do this? And I, and I want to hear about your process after I'm done yammering. Yeah. But you put Casino Royale and then you went into Quantum of Solace. You literally had a sequel of music. Mm. And I'm like, that's <laughs> freaking genius. He just literally did, you know, two of my favorite movies back to back. And he did it in musical notes. There wasn't one image. It was musical notes. Do you consciously, to Joe's point, do you consciously go through and go, right, we're going to serve this up, then serve this up, then you're going to go here, then I'm going to talk. I mean, how much how much of that is process? Oh, it, months and months of planning. And I will expand on that a little bit more, but I just want to go back to another little point that you said. And, and I think, it, you know, it's, it's always difficult for me um, – because I, as a Bond fan, when, when people say, and we do often have people say, oh, you did this song better than you, I preferred your version to the original and everything else. And I always say, do you know what? It's the most flattering uh, compliment that anyone can ever pay 
but it's 100% not the aim. The, the aim is to pay tribute to James Bond music. And, um, you know, I, I don't want anyone to ever think that our goal is to go out there and upstage anything or, or, or whatever. That's just not what it is. It's it, it's so much done from a from a, a base of love of the of the franchise, of the film series, of the music of John Barry, David Arnold and all those art, artists. And it's such a wonderful compliment. But, it, you know, I almost feel embarrassed when people say that because you know that's not that's not the the aim of it the aim of it is just to keep the 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 love of bond alive and take it to to fans i mean i've always said it's created by a fan for fans so the the fact that you get that connection from it means that you know i've achieved that but yeah in terms of the whole sort of flow of the set and and and, and i mean it's very much a planned thing you know i i treat this very much as an, uh, like an emotional journey so um, how can we, um, you know, make the show go so that it has a peak? And, and it's funny because when when I sent that link to you, you were saying you you only caught the first hour, and I and I said, oh, because the second hour hadn't downloaded for you, whatever. And I said, you've got to see the second down the yeah. second hour because that's that is the best hour. Um, so yeah, and I mean, obviously, you wouldn't necessarily pick the order of the songs the way I've picked it. Um, if you just if you just came at it from your guys point of view if you were picking it you'd pick your favorite songs but i pick it the way that i know that our audience will react to our performances so for example the big one of the night for us is always licensed to kill that's the one that always takes the roof off because of kerry's performance of it so you kind of have to build it all around that i mean up until this year we've always performed our theater shows the 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 um order of the songs has always been chronological actually and it does work really well emotionally so in, in that respect what i'll do is i'll put the compare spots the speaking spots between certain songs and we do certain ones back to back like diamonds are forever straight into live and let die straight into man with the golden gun that works really really powerfully well the same thing with you know my name and another way to die those two being together just works really well and normally when we finish uh, you know my name for example on the theater shows you know, I always say to my drummer, as soon as the, the applause just starts to die off even a little bit, then go bang straight in with it. You know, before let, let's let's take them straight off their feet when they're not expecting it. So I went bananas. Yeah, that, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm honest. And by the well, way, I have to I have to tell you the um, I did something and Joe, get ready because I want to get your point of view being there live. But one of the things I did and I, this is very important for people is um I didn't put on my fancy headphones that are noise canceling. I put on kind of regular basic um, headphones. I, I was curious, you know, was, was there some guy at the back of the room holding a mic going, I hope this picks up, you know, while he's <laughs> sipping champagne and you're hearing gurgles, you know, because that's how Joe and I record. But <laughs> you did something where it was so clear. It sounded like you were in a recording studio. And, well, and that, I want to, yeah. I mean, how did you do that? Well, so we, obviously every single channel um, uh, that was being performed was going through our desk. I mean, we had a, a 64 channel desk, I think, their digital desk. So we were able to record to Mac every single individual channel. So the kick drum had its own channel. The snare had its own channel, just like you would if you were in a recording studio. So it does um, it does mean that when you get back home and you and you put it and you start mixing it together you can mix it almost like a recording studio obviously there's some of the audience that comes through the mics in the room but um the the, the thing is when you when you watch the performance you hear all the, the the real kind of clinical mixed um tracks but then what i've done with the bits in between where i'm speaking is that i've mixed back in the camera microphones so you get that room atmosphere. But the thing is, I actually had to do it that way, really, because the and Joe will, will back me up on it. The atmosphere in the room was just one that was so charged that every time we did anything, the whole room just erupted. I mean, in the in the in the 20 minute um, Majesty's medley, I had to actually hold my hand up a couple of times just to say to people, just just bring it down because we like we get to the end of a, of a queue within the medley. And there was kind of six or seven queues within the medley. And I didn't want I didn't want the um, sort of outpouring of emotion to ruin the next bit, which I knew would have as much emotional impact. So um, I was having to kind of sort of say, well, just hold it back. So that's one of the things I wanted to make sure that we took as much of that out of the, um, the recording that we're putting out as possible so that the people sitting at home kind of don't have it ruined by someone, you know, somebody go, Way! 
you know so um that's why <laughs> it sounds me. so sort of crystal crystal clear <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what 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 was that like? I mean, what what was the clarity in the room? I mean, the sound reverberating through. I remember you telling me at one point you were at a casino table and you could hear it coming up mm. at you. Yeah, at one point. Yeah, right. At one point, I was again. There was so much going on. So so you know, once or twice I took a walk and I they had a couple um, uh, like a blackjack table, a poker table set up, and I'm just like, oh my god, I can't I can't not play some poker and blackjack while I'm at Piz Gloria or whatever. And, um, and yeah, and as I was there, like I was looking at, you know, like, you know, when, when Lazy becomes walking up the steps with the gold, um, balustrade, I guess they call it with the circles. I'm, I would look, I'm sitting right there looking at it as, and, and the music was coming up the stairs while I was sort of sitting there playing. I'm just like this again, this is insane. Like this is just absolutely insane. Um, to your point about the, the clarity of the music and the way you mixed it, one of the things I very much appreciated that you got in the video was that you had multiple camera angles so yeah. that you were able to, you know, again, you, there, you could see every, every strum of the guitar. You... you saw every... Um, every time that his, his, his fingers touch the key, because honestly, and again, like, I don't know music well enough to articulate it, but I, I just found it so dazzling being able to watch you construct a piece of music. Like I'm watching yeah. every little individual ingredient that goes in to putting this music together. That honestly really kind of blew my mind. Because it's, it, I mean, it, you know, we just saw the Macy's Thanksgiving parade a week or so ago, and every time they sing, there's lip syncing, and you just kind of like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But this... that's what I wanted to show, yeah. I wanted to, yeah. Show, sorry, Joe, I wanted to show, I wanted to show that, you know, I want, I want people to see that, you know, every single part of what we do is performed live, everything. Mm. Um, one of the things I always concerned about, and I even talk about it in in my little um, speaking bits, is because we all play with in ear uh, headphones now. Um, partly because there's so much going on, and the, the main reason uh, actually as well is that I make the band play to click track. So in other words, the tempo of the song, they get the tempo of the song every single time, absolutely perfect. Because when we first started 15 years ago, we'd go out and we'd do it without that. And it would be approximate and it would be fine. And, you know, but it just even like License to Kill just has a completely different groove if it's just even. And if I said, you know, four BPM, it wouldn't mean anything to you. But if it was four beats a minute quicker, which is nothing. But if it was and if it when it was, it didn't have that same groove. And that just wasn't good enough for me, uh, you know, as the a bomb music connoisseur that I am and slight, um, you know, slightly, uh, OCD. Um, so that's why we, we did that. And, and so, yeah, with the cameras, I, I really want to show that. And, and you guys will know because the guys that are on the sort of fan subscription, um, service that we do on certain tiers that they're on, they actually get all the isolated audio and isolated cameras as well. So they can watch the keyboard player for the four minute trap. They can watch the trumpet players and the brass and they can watch. So, they really do get to see all it's I tell you what, it's it's pretty um it's pretty ballsy to put it out there like that because if it goes wrong then you know when it when it goes wrong everyone's <laughs> gonna see that then, you know. But we did have a few problems with the cameras actually. One of the cameras on on the uh right hand side of the band as I'm looking out or the left hand side as you're looking from the audience, one of the cameras the guy's holding there, I think he must have knocked one of the switches in the second half and shut the filter. Um, and so the, the image on that is so dark, I couldn't use it for most of the second half, which was really annoying. And then the other problem in that room was that it was just a real struggle to get angles where we could show a wide enough shot of the band without the audience being in the way, because it's a very low roof, a very tight space, mm. lots of people, standing room only in the audience, you know, 150, 200 people crammed into this sort of tiny space. So, yeah, I mean, actually considering all of those elements, I'm really, really pleased with how it came out. <laughs> 